around. I know it's been a minute since I've had a vlog up on the channel. There has been a little bit more activity over on the Meeples Included YouTube. So that is youtube.com slash Meeples Included. Uh, I will talk about that more at the end of this video, but I wanted to do a quick take on Solaria's mission if you are at all intrigued. Uh, Solaria's mission came out from Spielworks a couple months back. I did not actually get my copy until a couple weeks ago because Seattle in general was hit with an epidemic level flu. So myself and my friend Suze both got hit really, really hard with this nasty flu. Both of us are working way too hard. So my copy of Solaria's mission didn't get to me quite in time to be in the first wave of reviewers or whatever, but um, I did get to play it three times in three days, and that gave me a pretty good insight. I played it with three different groups, um, mostly teaching games. Only a couple of people had played from game to game, which is always kind of interesting to see what new players will bring to a table and what someone like myself or my friend who had already played it a, a time or two will try to do to try and break up their strategies or feel things out. So Solari's mission is two to four player. I have played it uh, four, three, and four. I don't know that I would want to play it two player. Um, each round, uh, dice are rolled and they are placed onto a little rondelle similar to a glass road or uh, even more so like a um, Oran Labora. And Players will select a die and take some actions associated with both its color and the number of pips on it. You might take a small um, contamination cube if there are too many pips. And then you take one of like 12 different actions that you can choose from. And the game goes around and around and around over four, four different rounds. And then you score up and everything kind of wins you a few points. So you can level up your dice, you can explore colonies, you can get outposts out, um, you can do lots and lots of things to get victory points. But most importantly, you need to um, colonize sets of planets, uh, unique sets. So you need like um, the yellow one, the blue one, the black one, and the brown one, and that will give you extra points. And the more sets of those you make, probably the better you're going to do in the game. Um, we are, after three plays in three days, I'm going to say that in order to win the game, you probably need at least one set of these planets. You can kind of choose any other path to, to supplement your points in, but I, I watched a friend of mine who is really solid, very, very smart. He maximized everything about this game. He did an excellent job running every other strategy, but he didn't work on planets at all, and he came in third, like almost at last. Um, so I think you need, need, need planets. And then what you can do is that, um, like outposts, you can build almost anywhere, but you get more points for having wood next to these little like stations and the end of the game, you can score similar to, um, the majority scoring in Terra Mystica, the more like pieces that you can connect within your range of your ship. Um, you score first through last and, um, there's just so many like little fabulous things. You also have cards that are used in two ways, which is everybody's favorite. Um, you can scooch them under the board one way to gain extra dice powers or additional small things that you can do, or you scooch them in the other way to complete missions and uh, missions are super important. Um, you, you need them to help you complete sets of outposts and you also need them just, uh, just to gain these little outpost benefits. There's just a few of them. So the game has one really heinously written rule. Um, we'll get to components in a minute, but the rule is um, regarding these outposts. So every time you build a piece of wood onto the board, um, if it's not in the center and it's not your second time having that piece of wood on that sector and you don't already have an outpost on that sector, you may build an outpost when you build the piece of wood. But you have to build them in sets. So if I build one for a space station, then a colony, then a mission, then I could build another set and I could start with another mission or something. It is, it is the most convoluted rule in the whole rule book and it's really poorly written. So there is actually a post on BGG that helps clarify it quite a lot. I think Odie is going to increase the explanation of that into the next printing's rules because it, it, it took a BGG crawl for me to to really understand how outposts work. So just 
go in knowing you're not going to know that by just reading the rule book. And then it had a cu couple of component issues. Um, for me personally, um, when you get your copy from Spellworks, it has these tiny little discs. I don't really care. I didn't mind the tiny little discs. They were colony discs. You only play them once every couple of turns. My fingers can manipulate them just fine. But if you email Spillworks, they will just send you replacement discs that are slightly larger. They just order the wrong size. They were ordering um, your space bucks and your oil are supposed to be marked with these teeny tiny little discs and they accidentally ordered all of the circles at the same size. So no big deal to me, but certainly for people with less dainty hands, it would be much more difficult to manipulate. Um, the one component issue I had that I was called out on Twitter as being like, finicky, I guess is the word, um, were uh, the spinner that like, where you put the dice and you kind of spin it around one space per turn. It doesn't even need to spin really, but it's a spinner. You glue it together instead of just having like a little brad in the middle that spins the thing. And as someone who doesn't actually own glue at their house, because it has no need for it, it's, it's just an odd requirement of me. Um, I will, when my copy, um, gets to my house, I will be gluing it together. And that just feels weird. It felt weird to put glue on a, you know, $60, $70 board game. Uh, so that, that's just a weird one. Uli acted on Twitter like it was no big deal, just one little drop of glue. But it's, it's rare that I would put glue onto a board game. I know minis players out there are guffawing because they glue everything, but I don't often glue anything. I can tell you that right now. I'm just not a crafty person. Uh, so Solarius Mission, um, I do feel kind of like Russian Railroad, so you need the sets of planets, like you need at least one set of planets, and then you can choose a secondary um, strategy of some sort. You can kind of pick and choose from the other things that give you points, but you can't ignore planets. It's just required. It's, it's part of the game. Um, otherwise, I thought it was beautiful and fun and simple. It's easy to teach. Um, the outposts are the really the trickiest rule on there, and I think what we wanted was just like, a cheeky little checklist that says, are you not in the center sector? Check. Are there no other outposts on the sector from you? Check. Like, you just want it to be kind of tongue-in-cheek because it's such a very specific rule. It also has one other rule about building missions next to built-up stations that you get to use an outpost bonus, and it's just really odd and there's no reminder text on anything, so um, overall I think Solaris Mission is a total win. Like, if you like Spielworks games, easy purchase. It was great. Um, Le Granja is a better game, but it's hard when you're talking Le Granja, which is one of those, like, top 20 games for me, so not everything can be a top 20 game. This is certainly a win, and it was well worth my time and play effort. Um... I also got to play my second game of Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Uh, that one came out from Cranio Creations during Essen and will be coming out in the States from Colmini or not. Uh, it has really beautifully done, ornate artwork. Um, it's a kind of action selection game where you have all of these cards that you can purchase that are super expensive. You have these little actions you can take. You can activate the cards you've purchased and um, a little kind of guilt Catholic track that's similar to the track in Grand Austria Hotel, where if you don't meet like a minimum requirement at the end of uh, three of the rounds, you take a penalty and it's um, not devastating, just punishing, very punishing. Um, in our play, this the second play, you uh, this twice now that we've used the advanced variant where you get these little uh, cards that have goals on them. And all of us playing really like zoned in on these goals. And so the first couple of rounds while we were all working on those, I don't think it was quite as competitive placement as it would have been if maybe two of us had focused on that and two of us had kind of ignored it to do better actions. And so as the game wound down, uh, the actions became much, much more uh, competitive because everyone kind of got the cards out of the way that they wanted and now wanted to, to take things on the board. And so we all got in each other's way a lot more. 
Um, Lorenzo Mal- um, El Magnifico. Really fun to say. I think it's a solid game. I can't wait to play it a little bit more. I, I don't think anyone I know has played it, so it's one of those, like, if I'm willing to teach it, anyone will put it on the table with me. Um, I do have a couple of vlogs to edit. I just, all the coughing and everything, it's just so hard to get them cohesive, so I might just have to refilm them too now that I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, I also got Indonesia. Um, so Splatter re-released Indonesia and the, uh, the Great Zimbabwe this, uh, last month, and I had pre-ordered that a long, long time ago, so I got a surprise package in the mail, and because I heard, uh, through our Games on the Rocks Twitch, um, that the theme was completely different, I picked up Energy Empire from the Manhattan Project. Um, the original Manhattan Project was, uh, the, one of the most depressing things I've ever heard for a theme in a game, and I didn't want to bring myself to build an, the bomb that, like, blew up an entire city of people. Still scarred an entire region. I can't imagine a human that wants to relive Hiroshima, so I have just stayed away from the Manhattan Project. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure it's a perfectly serviceable game, but the theme is abhorrent to me. So, um, I hadn't even, I hadn't even looked at the gameplay, but over and over and over, I keep hearing how fabulous Energy Empire is, and then I heard that it wasn't the same theme, so I was willing to pick this up. Um, I should have at least one of these played next week, if not both. And so, uh, thank you so much for tuning in here. Uh, the Maggie Mouth channel will keep living on. I love vlogging. We do have some more of the, like, live streamy stuff happening over at the Meeples Included channel, so twitch.tv slash Meeples Included, as well as youtube.com slash Meeples Included. We've got, um, almost bi-weekly Games on the Rocks, which is on Friday nights, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, and that is, uh, four of us chatting over drinks. We usually have a topic. We have this fabulous Twitch chat, which is super active and awesome and funny. Uh, we have a really great time doing that. Um, this past Friday, uh, my friend and fellow Meeple, uh, Nicholas Co. organized a board game arena meetup, so six of us got on and we played Can't Stop and Six Nymphed and Takaido together, all while streaming, so there was chatter and all that stuff, and it was a really good time too. Um, we also have um, individual videos, so I did my top 11 games from last year that I missed out on. Um, Netters Plays did her top 10 board games and card games from last year. Um, we just have like really cool constant content going on over there, so I highly encourage you, if you follow me here and you would like to see more content even, go over to the Meeples Included channels, go over to the Twitch, go over to the YouTube, and subscribe there. But otherwise, there will be a lot more content coming up here, as long as I can avoid these death flus again. Um, I have missed you all so, so much. Um, I hope you all are up to something fun and fabulous. If you are on the Potion Explosion app, which came out last week, I am MaggieBot, M-A-G-G-I-B-O-T. You can challenge me to a game. It is on iOS and Android. Um, it's a fabulous this little light game, so um, Potion Explosion is a wizarding school of some sort. Each round you take a marble out of this display and any marbles that fall kind of bejeweled style that clack together that are the same color you get to earn and then you put them into your potion recipes and as soon as potions are full you get new potion recipes but you can then use the potions to do things. Uh, the app is really well done. It's still got a couple of features that they'll have to fill in at some point because you can't uh, switch between active games really easily yet and uh, there's no notification push. Um, but you can play online or you can play versus the AI and the AI will kick your butt because it's really smart. Um, I'm really bad at the game, so if you want your ranking to go up, that's a, probably a good safe way to do it. Uh, that's all for me for now. Please leave me any comments below, any games you'd like to see, um, any opinions of. I've played quite a few and I've played a little bit more Feast for Odin. I still need to play a full game of the colonists. Someday I'll get that in. Um, upcoming will be the Oracle of Delphi review any minute here, and I hope to see you all soon.